Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Michigan City Park Board meeting for Wednesday, June 5th, 2019. If you could please join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Shannon, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Latchford? Here. Mr. Freeze? Here. Mr. Lang? Here. Ms. Espar? Here. The meetings from our previous meeting on May 15th are before us. If, uh, unless there are any corrections or edits, do we have a motion to approve? I would move we accept the minutes as printed. I second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We move on to old business and get some project updates on the ESG project. Jeremy? Thank you. And good evening. A uh, couple of uh, items uh, regarding the ESG project um, that are still outstanding. Um, the Patriot Park lighting that I've mentioned in our last uh, several meetings. So we're having some uh, issues with that, doing some troubleshooting um, regarding the, the wiring or some of the infrastructure. Um, of that, and uh, we did meet on site last week with um, the engineers, um, and uh, ESG brought in their electrical engineer to look at it. They've been communicating with Marcus Electric. Um, they're they're doing their electrical speak right now, back and forth, um, uh, exchanging some information, and we're hoping to have some type of a final um, report slash uh, uh, potential proposal then to be taking uh, taken back to the city council for potential funding. Um, to finish and complete the project um, accordingly. Uh, so we're waiting on that. I'm hoping to have that uh, you know, in the next week or so um, would be my hope uh, so that way we can potentially move forward. Um, and then the uh, the solar portion of the project is going to begin, uh, be beginning. Um, they will be doing uh, solar panels at the Senior Center as well as at Patriot Park as a, as a part of this. And the Senior Center um, is at this point in time going to, uh, is planning to begin uh, the third week of June and it'll take roughly three weeks. So there will be some storage um, containers you will you might see show up in uh, Fetters Alley. We're giving them a little spot in Fetters Alley to store everything so it's a short distance to uh, transport. Um, but they are gonna stay off of um, from working and having staff in there um, to take up parking spots on the weekends before and after um, the 4th of July as well on the 4th of July. Um, so we're communicating that, working very closely with them and they've been very good to work with. Um, with that, and then uh, the seniors, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Patriot Park uh, Solar is going to be the last of, I believe, four different facilities that are getting it throughout, uh, having this installed throughout the city. So there's not an exact date of when they're going to be doing that yet, but still sometime this summer. Um, so we're, uh, we're looking forward to the completion of those projects, and I'd be happy to answer any questions the board may have. Thank you, Jeremy. Any uh, questions? Yes, Jeremy, uh, the lights at Patriot Park, is it just one particular field that we're having trouble with? One, one field that we're having... Um, what I would call it, it, it would it shorted out a few times yeah. um, where the where the lights did go out, um, but it, and it happened twice. And Marcus Electric came out and did a, a did some fixing or some troubleshooting of that. And crossing our fingers, it hasn't happened since. Um, but they still believe there is a potential for this to continue to happen, and they want to make sure that we have you know everything that we need properly, so that way these lights last the next fifty years like they're yeah. rated to do so. Any other questions? Jeremy, in regard to the solar panels and uh, senior center, where are they going to be located? On the roof. Okay. Great. On the roof of the senior center, yeah. So it won't be taking up any additional park space or anything of that nature. Okay. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to table business if there is any. No, sir. Okay, right on to new business. Uh, the architectural engineering selection for the old lighthouse museum exterior repairs. Okay, so this is regarding phase two of the exterior repairs, which is being funded by a $70,000 Lake Michigan Coastal Program grant that we received and a $70,000 match that was received through the City Council. And the way we approach this, because it's a historic um, building, instead of just having architects give us estimates of cost to do the work, we went a step further and asked them to submit qualifications for doing this type of work. Those um, packets that were received were independently scored by two people from the Michigan City Historical Society, the Assistant City Planner, and myself. The scoring criteria um, was based on things like um, staffing ability to complete the work in a timely fashion, and we really concentrated on what other projects have you done that are similar. 
Um, so that had a really high scoring weight. So after independently scoring these, we put the scores together. Um, this has all been sent to the DNR for approval by our grant specialist, and she did give us approval last week. So the top score was Crumlish and Crumlish out of South Bend, Indiana. You guys might remember uh, Kurt Gardner. He works with them very closely. He's one of the staff um, that will be assigned to this. So that is our recommendation today that the board approves moving forward with negotiating fees with Crumlish and Crumlish. Um, at that point, we would bring back um, a contract to the park board for their professional services and move forward. Thank you. Shannon, any questions? This is just one more so of curiosity, but I noticed that um, DH2W Architecture had done previous work also on the old Lighthouse Museum, and they were significantly outscored by Crumlish and Crumlish. Is this the first time that Crumlish and Crumlish had submitted? Um, for any projects that for I've any? worked on, yes. Okay, all right. That's my only question. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? All right. Well, one, I, my only comment is um, I, I like the approach for the selection. That's it's an important part of the whole process is to get the right group. And um, to have four to five people scored using the same scoring system, it's a very methodical, logical way to go about it. So appreciate the uh, time and effort everyone took to get us to this point. So, uh, are there any questions from the public? If not, um, what's the pleasure of the board? I think I would make uh, a motion to move forward with the next step of um, getting estimates. I guess it would only be from Crumlish and Crumlish uh, based on their highest score of all three of the uh, requests for qualifications that were submitted. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. All right, the next item on the agenda is the Marquette High School Golf Team's Use Agreement. Thank you. And uh, this is um, the same agreement that was in front of the board last year for the 2018 2019 golf season. Um, this allows uh, the Marquette High School girls and boys golf teams to uh, use of our both of our north and our south. Um, course, uh, golf courses. Um, they also, um, and this will be from boys will be March through June and girls are August through September of that school season, that school year I should say. Um, each, at the start of each season the coach will um, give us the proper information as far as kids names so we have a list of who they are um, so they would get that free play um, and then any um, tournament they hold or, hold or invitational they hold at our facility we would receive ten dollars per player um, a ten dollar per player fee from each of the players. So, depending on how many schools they have, how many kids, you know, multiply that by ten. That's the fee that we would receive for being able to, um, and giving them the ability to host that tournament um, on our site. Um, in turn, um, it would allow us, uh, the park department, use of Marquette High School facilities uh, for programming, um, leagues, um, anything of that nature. We have uh, utilized it um, and attempted to utilize it. Um, and also with having lack of signups, haven't had a chance in a couple programs. So, um, but we are working very closely with them. They've been very open and receptive for us utilizing in turn of this um, as a, portion, a part of this agreement. So, um, in spirit of it, I would uh, recommend moving forward again in the 2019-2020 um, school year for the Marquette Girls and Boys golf teams to utilize our municipal golf courses. Thank you, Jeremy. Any questions? Is there any other potential source of revenue from this agreement other than the ten dollar a player fee if there's a tournament we would uh, stand to potentially make money via like through our concession stand okay. um, things of that nature if anyone wanted to um, use a golf cart to go around the course um, as a spectator we would charge them our golf um, cart fee um, but again that that doesn't happen very often um, to my knowledge um, so those that as a part of this agreement, that's about the only other ways we would uh, stand and make revenue, um, you know, regard, regarding this outside of that $10 um, player fee. Then a follow-up question to that. Um, how much was raised in previous years with that $10 per player? In, I mean, are there a lot of tournaments? So last year was our first year. Um, 
in this structure of an agreement. Um, there were two invitationals held. Um, I'd have to get the exact numbers. There was one uh, boy invitational, one girl invitational that was held. I believe one of them might even got rained out, so it never even happened. Um, so I, I can get that information to you and, and circulate it through the board. Um, I want to say, off the top of my head, I'm thinking like there was like five or six teams, handful of kids each team, so it, it, it doesn't equate to a lot yeah. um, as a part of that. Okay. Those invitationals typically are during the week, not on the weekends? Um, I believe it's a Saturday morning. Should be. The, the one, the, one um, what the, the girls one, I believe, was at the north course. Um, and I think then the boys ones got got weathered out. I believe. Do we have right of first refusal? For for example, let's say they want to have it on a Saturday morning, and that's our yeah. that's our time to make money. And we're shutting the course down for for the Marquette Invitational. I would hope that we would have some sort of right of first refusal <coughs> or approve the dates of which they want to hold the Cor Correct. They have to give those dates to us well in advance. Okay. Um, so if we have, we're not going to uh, move a large outing out of the way. We were able to accommodate the one on the Saturday morning because it was at the North Course. South Course, we're not going to accommodate that because of the play um, or an outing uh, specifically. So um, it does, they, that's why they give us their dates well in advance. We're able to schedule it accordingly, but we always do remain the right of first refusal, okay. whether it's leagues or other specific outings. Sure. There wasn't any problem last year with... Uh... No, absolutely okay. not. No. They've been very good to work with. Um, they were very good to work with last year, and then in years past prior to that, prior to us formalizing the agreement. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chairman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, last year, I, I mean, we had some concerns, but we didn't have a problem. It worked out well, and, and the the pro at the golf course can really determine if they, when they can use it, so it, it doesn't hinder our income from mm -hmm. a large play. And yeah, it worked out good last year. Unless there are any other questions or comments, do we have a motion to approve the Market High School Golf Team use agreement for the 2019 and 20 golf season only? I would make that motion. We allow Market to use uh, the golf course north and south uh, per our uh, terms of the agreement. I will second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is the Gather Gardena event request. Jeremy? Yes, and this is a, a returning event or events, if you will, um, that has been presented to us at Gardena Park. It's Emmanuel Lutheran Church. Um, they're interested, interested in utilizing the park on June 15th, July 20th, and August 17th um, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, this summer. Um, and what they do and what their intent is to provide a variety of lawn games and crafts for children. Uh, also give out uh, hot dogs and water. It is a free event to anyone in the community who wants to attend. Um, I do know that uh, I have spoken to people um, that have attended in the past and have really enjoyed it. I thought it was good, uh, good gathering of our community, good uh, um, conversations and the like. And, and the kids have enjoyed the games and, and activities that have been presented as well. Um, it is low maintenance um, and it's what we do every day by picking up um, you know collecting trash in our parks so um, they do a very good job of cleaning up after themselves and you know we put an additional couple cans down there and, and allow them use of the uh, shelter that's right there by the playground so again it's you know very uh, little to no additional uh, cost uh, for the park department um, to allow this usage and I would uh, highly recommend um, approval of this event again this year. Thank you Jeremy. Any questions? I've got one, Jeremy. It's, yeah, it's a it sounds like a great event, but I'm not quite sure what we're approving. <clears throat> Allowing them to use of doing an organized event in in our park, um, and they will provide us a certificate of liability insurance, listing us as additionally insured. Um, specifically, being the fact that they're um, giving out you know food and and, and beverage right. um, and things of that nature. So we, could they? And that's all great. You know, I, I, I'm grateful that. They're do, holding the event, and then they're coming to us for approval. But could they just, since there's no fee involved and they're not renting a facility, just go to the park and do the same thing mm -hmm. outside of before without any approval from this board? Yeah, any or any group could utilize our our neighborhood parks for that. So by approving this, though, are we giving them? 
not that they need an exclusive right to use it in case other groups are there that day or yeah so I think mainly the the concern is from their standpoint is the use of that shelter um, which we've had um, issue I, I don't want to call it issues but um, I guess confusion in the past because you know we're able to um, reserve shelters in Washington Park because we have staff on site um, so we're, we're able to post um, a sign on it but sometimes other other groups or other organ you know well usually not other organizations but groups of people are already in the park uh, so we like to post something just so that way hey on these three dates gather our gardenas at the park and just so the public is aware to no you know and to notify them properly that um, brings a lot more light to this so it's really securing the shelter for mm -hmm. these yeah, three more days. so than anything yeah. else yes okay are those shelters available for rent, or is it first come first serve? Gardena Park has always been a first come and first serve, first come first serve facility. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I'm for, hoping this doesn't happen, but in the event that they get there at ten o'clock in the morning and someone else is there, would they contact us, and then someone would need to go out and, or can we put up a sign? Or, something like that yeah so it, it did happen last year um, I think it was I don't know if it was their first or their second event where another family come down for a barbecue for a day in the park um, and they had kindly asked them to move and um, so at the end of the day it worked out um, they I believe uh, Reverend Solomon he did I don't know if I recall correctly he did email me um, but by the time um, I called him got back to him or even looked at getting staff there it was already rectified and, and it was resolved and everyone um, behave so. so if I can interject I was actually there it was a baby shower baby shower that's what it was <laughs> so a group had come in early and decorated it all pretty in balloons and crepe paper everywhere but they weren't coming back till after this event so they told the church just go ahead and move your arts and crafts in there because it's highly visible so it, it worked out well that was nice. but there could wow. be a conflict if yeah. we don't put a sign up okay is that's that a highly used part is that our intent to put a sign up a couple days beforehand or yeah Okay, yeah. that's yeah, that's what that'd I be a good saying. idea. It was a great event. I attended it. Did a nice job. Any other questions or comments? If not, what's the pleasure of the board? I would uh, like to make a motion that we accept this and the, the gather at Gardena event for the dates of June 15, July 20, and August 17, from 11 to 2 p.m. With the stipulation that there would be some kind of sign or notice so that there is uh, no problem with anyone else who wishes to utilize uh, those structures at that time. I would second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, moving right along we'll to the animal placement request. Tamburins. Hello. Good evening, board. Elizabeth Emmerich with Washington Park Zoo. Um, the zoo is asking permission tonight to rehome four of our female cotton tops. Um, once again, the, the troop has kicked them out, um, and since we can't safely reintroduce them, we would like to rehome them at a facility that's got the, the proper permits. We won't make any money off of it, or, um, and the acquiring facility will pay for the shipping of the tamarins. Um, we haven't made any changes to their environment or husbandry techniques or anything for the troop, so the best we can guess is that um, some of the groups, some of the tamarins in the group are coming of age and kind of um, challenging each other. So we're, with the different age groups, we're in there, we're just kind of figuring that's kind of what's leading to all this. I feel like I'm here every week doing this, asking <laughs> you know, permission. So um, that's pretty much what we have going on right now. But instead of keeping them in a uh, cage off display, um, we'd like to find them a permanent home where they can continue to educate people about their species. Elizabeth, uh, questions from the board? I, I just have one question, and I realize that there these things do happen. Is this group of four that have been selectively outed, so to speak? Uh, are these males females? All females or all males? What? They're all females, right? They're now. all yeah. females. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. And we're in the one of the females is the the mom of them, so we're thinking she's getting elderly, and the younger females are challenging mom and want to take over the troop. So because they are. Um, they are altered, so we can't reproduce anybody. So, mm -hmm. you know, and we thought doing that with the males, that that would kind of, you know, keep this from happening. But now, now, just out of curiosity, if you were to leave them, I mean, does this involve aggression? That's okay. That's yeah, fine. yeah, they, I mean, in a 
in the wild, they would chase somebody out, and that Tamron would go start a new troop someplace mm -hmm. else while well, in captivity in a there's no environment. Way. Yeah, there's no way for them to go. So, and they, you know, they've got pretty good claws. They've got pretty good teeth, so they can do some, you know, superficial damage yes. to each yeah. other. So, and it's stressful for them anyway. You know, if you keep them in that type of environment, it's just, you know, they'll they'll keep the the guys that they want chased out. They'll keep them on the ground. They won't be able to eat. They won't be able to come up and and get off the the ground. So, yeah, stress wise, it's it's a lot better for them to get pulled out. Thank you. Have any of the ones that have been kicked out have they been injured? Um, we had some superficial wounds, um, and as soon as we, we've kind of learned to watch what to watch for when this starts, um, so we, we pull them pretty quick and we see that they're keeping somebody down on the ground, um, but just superficial wounds, nothing that's been needed stitches or anything like that. Is this calling, if it continues, are you concerned about the longevity of keeping these species in our zoo? Yeah, well, and... and with finding a home for these four, we're um, in contact with SSP, the Species Survival Plan um, Coordinator for Top Tamarins, and we're kind of going to be in contact with them to find out, you know, do they have any suggestions or, you know, maybe at some point we would need to rehome the rest of the troop and bring in a whole new species. So um, we're kind of playing it by ear right now. I mean, they're a real active group, so we'd hate to, to relocate them, but I mean, we're kind of letting them tell us what they need from us, so, um, but that, that is a possibility, so, but we are in close contact with the SSB coordinator for their species, so. Okay. Thank you, Elizabeth. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments? If not, do we have an a motion to approve the animal placement request? For the I would, I would like to make that, that motion that we uh, rehome four females for the betterment of, of everyone in the relationship among all of them. It's a wise thing to do. A second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks. Any other new business that did, that did not make the agenda? No, sir. All right. We'll move on to reports of officers. Jeremy, please. Thank you. On uh, May 20th, uh, I had the fortune to attend the Senior Center Volunteer Luncheon um, at the Senior Center um, and was absolutely astonished by another record-setting performance um, by um, those members of the Senior Center and those who volunteer. Um, there was a total of num uh, number of hours of 9,641 uh, volunteer hours that were recorded. Um, many, I, I did learn that many of the volunteers at times do not record their volunteer hours. So I'm guessing it's it's upwards of you know in excess of ten thousand hours. Um, but one um, uh, member over there, Deborah Hinkle, um, had four hundred and thirty four hours herself um, this past year. So um, just absolutely outstanding. Um, couldn't thank all of them enough, um, and appreciate the invite to uh, to enjoy that time with them. Um, and, you know the, the amount of things wouldn't be done and completed at the senior center without. A number of volunteers and volunteer hours that are put in from whether it's events or day in and day out basis assisting Tara and her staff so just want to thank all of those that were present and all of those that uh, um, had you know whether it was one hour or up to uh, 434 hours so thank thank you all for your assistance and volunteering um, at the senior center on May 23rd um, we held um, um, a workshop with Save the Dunes and also members of our of the public and Sheridan Beach. Um, it was here at the EOC room here in City Hall. It was a pretty good turnout and I thought I had some uh, overall some very good conversation. Um, a very good report on uh, presentation um, by Victoria Wittig from uh, Save the Dunes. And I think they were attempting to, and our, our idea is to attempt to educate and work with homeowners um, at the end of the day on protecting our greatest natural resource, um, which is the Sheridan Beach Esplanade and our lakefront. Um, so, um, as mentioned, there was going to be another workshop coming up. We're hoping to um, focus more on um, getting um, realtors, um, contractors, some of our summer um, vacation rental property owners uh, possibly in there uh, to share some of this information with them. Um, and we did schedule that today. That will be Thursday, June 27th uh, from 5 to 7 p.m., but we will be getting that information out to everyone. Um, we'll send an email and an invite and a flyer and, and the like. So um, that'll be June 27th, Thursday, June 27th from 5 to 7 p.m. again here at City Hall. <clears throat> Regarding the service scape uh, landscaping um, agreement or our project that'll be happening at Millennium Plaza, I have met on site with Ant from Service Scape um, and with uh, ordering everything, lead time, 
sometime within the next couple weeks or by the end of June at the latest you'll see them uh, starting to mobilize in um, Millennium Plaza to begin um, all their plannings. Um, she's just like all of us, um, kind of at the mercy of the weather uh, right now. Unfortunately, a lot of their other projects as well. But uh, the ball is rolling on that, and we're looking forward to getting that going and, and really uh, beautifying Millennium Plaza. Uh, City Kids Day Camp, um, we have hired all our staff, and orientation has been taking place this week. Um, and camp does uh, begin next week, Monday, June 10th, um, at 8 a.m. at Lake Hills Elementary School. Um, we do still have um, a few openings in our 6 and 7 age group, as well as our, as our 10 and 11 age group, but only a couple. So I imagine those are going to fill up, and we will have another full camp of 75 uh, campers uh, this summer. So really looking forward to getting that um, getting that program going as we, uh, it's one of our uh, uh, really good uh, programs that we run here through the Michigan City Park Department. Also coming up uh, Saturday, June 29th, um, we have Michigan City's 64th Annual Patriotic Parade, um, and that will begin at 11 a.m. Um, we are still accepting applications um, for that um, through Friday, June 15th at 12 o'clock noon. Um, and you, can all, you can register online at www.michigancityparks.com, or you can come here to our office in the lower level of City Hall uh, Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. So we're really looking forward to another good uh, parade. Hopefully not as hot as last year's was. Um, that was pretty warm out there. But uh, nevertheless, uh, any, as long as it's not raining, I think I'll be happy. Um, regarding our electronic signage, um, we're hoping to have that in already. Uh, the additional signs that are supposed to be at the lifeguard tower as well as at the pier um, by the stairs walking out. Um, they're on order. We're just waiting for them to get here and get installed. So I'm hoping in the next week to two weeks that'll that'll be completed I'm not sure why it's taking the lead time is taken a little extra long on, on these this time around um, but uh, all the electric has been run um, to there so it's just a matter of the sign showing up and then being installed um, so we're hoping that happens soon as as the beach weather is going to be fast approaching and our season's already begun so um, hopefully we can get that done and completed as uh Kind of mentioned, and as uh, as you all well know, um, we've had um, our fair share of rain here over the last uh, month plus, um, up to and including having to um, close the Michigan City Golf Course um, on at least half of the days so we've we've intended to be open. Um, because of that, um, we've had um, grass knee high in areas of our fairways um, that we have been able to, unable to get to because of how wet it is. Um, Randy and his staff did a very good job uh, yesterday of making a, a putting a large dent in that and starting to cut down and cut back some of those areas as we began drying out. And then we got three quarters of an inch of rain last night and put us back and had to close the south course again today. So it's been very frustrating. Um, we are doing um, everything we can to keep up on it, um, but we need a little bit of help from Mother Nature. Um, this expands beyond um, the Michigan City golf courses. Um, this goes to our neighborhood parks as well. Um, we are finally starting to be able to edge into um, Adams Park a little bit. Um, that Some of that grass is probably thigh high now. Um, it is embarrassing, but um, we really, it's, we're really we kind of up against it because of the lay of the land at Adams Park and the lack of drainage there and, and the kind of uh, basically it's on clay and there's a lot of swamp land behind it so um, we're, we're really up against it we are doing working as hard as we can um, but we are starting to finally catch up on some of that mowing um, Patriot Park as well um, but even some of our neighborhood parks uh, last week we had to go in and, and cut and then cut a second time and even cut a third time on site just to just to continue to knock it down and try to get back down to the to the uh, levels of cut that we usually maintain our parks at. So um, we've been chasing our tails a little bit, but our staff has been uh, getting after it. And I just want to thank them for their, their hard work and effort um, because it has been a task along with everything else that, that uh, we've had, including setting up for events and et cetera. So um, they've been doing a fantastic job. And, um, that does conclude my report, other than we did have some graffiti at, on Adams Park um, playground set that we did send a guy out there to remove. So um, just some graffiti remover, so it didn't really cost us anything other than the time of our staff. So um, that does conclude my report, and I'd be happy to answer a question the board may have. I just have, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Please. I just have one question on um, your your day camp. You had mentioned how many participants, and I, I did not hear that. So. We take uh, uh, 75, uh -huh. um, uh, up to 75. Um, we break it down into sections of 25 kids, 6 and 7 year olds, 8 yeah, and 9, right. 10 and 11, 25 years. and then we take waiting lists, because some kids um, maybe are here for two weeks or three weeks or four weeks, and then they go on a family vacation or go somewhere, so we would open that spot up. Um, so it's a pay, pay by, you know, every week you pay, 
So if you're only going to be here for so potentially we could service 85, 100 kids throughout the summer, but we take 75 max at a time. I think that's a great program, and it's it's nice to see that there are that many people interested in in having their children involved in summer activities. Absolutely, outstanding. Any other questions, <coughs> Jim? Are we controlling the sign, the electronic signage down at the park? Is it a park department function at this point? No, right now it is um, controlled by the Michigan City Fire Department. Okay. So when, which is a conversation that's going to have to be had once. We really expand and get everything. Because right now it's just d displaying basically the same message about dangers on the pier. Even when it's uh, not a dangerous condition. Correct. Correct. So it, there have to be the eyes that are down there more c consistently that are the ones displaying it. And if there's not a danger present, then we need sure. to look at, that's what we talked about originally, is it not being on. Right. The park department maintaining control of the message and the timing of that. Correct. And I'm not really concerned who has control of the message, as long as we're all on the same page as how we want it to be managed. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I will be following up on that. Thank you. And the only other question, in Millennial Park, there's an area outside of the fencing between, on the break wall, between the bridge and the fence that's maintained very beautifully. Uh, there's a little path in there and some landscaping. I didn't know who, who's responsible for that. If I... I'm certain of so where you're on the north side. North side of the fence, the Port Authority uh, Port takes Authority care of that. It. Yes. Yeah. it looks very nice. Yeah, it does. Thank you. If there are no other questions, we'll move on to um, the liaison reports. And I'm the Planning Commission liaison, and we did have a meeting, but there was nothing pertaining to the Park Department. Move on to a Port Authority liaison, Mr. Freeze. Uh, there was a meeting, but I couldn't get there. And Zoo Society, ladies, on Mr. Lane. Uh, with the Zoo Society, uh, this Saturday, uh, June the 8th, is Brew at the Zoo, and they have an overwhelming, uh, as far as I, I know, and you could probably uh, agree with me that uh, I think it's probably capped out already, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's something that is, is well attended, and it's a great fundraiser and a lot of fun. And also, uh, Running Wild at the Zoo, that is on July the 14th at 9 a.m. And they are still looking for sponsorships. There are, are different tiers. There's a, a Tier 1, uh, which is a $100 donation, a Tier 2, which is 200 a Tier 3, which is 500 And I've got some applications if anyone is, is interested in, in doing that. I know Phil had filled one out, and I did also, uh, just as a contribution to the Zo Zoological Society. And uh, everything, the gears are all in motion. And uh, is there anything else I need to, to mention about that? Or, I think, yeah, there's a lot of hardworking people on that. So, again, that's on uh, July the 14th at 9 a.m. That's on a Sunday. That's, that's all that I have to report. Thank you, Mr. Lang. We'll move on to the attorney's report. Ms. Poff, anything tonight? Thank you very much. I have nothing to report this evening. All right, thank you. And any director's reports tonight, Jim? No, sir. Okay, we'll move right on to Department of Finances. Mr. Lang. All right, under Department of Finances, uh, City Claims, uh, this is for City Claims docket for June the 5th, 2019. Municipal, $67,206.18. And I would like to make a motion that we go ahead and pay this. Uh, the claims docket for June the 5th. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The next is payroll number 11 for 2019. This is uh, May the 5th of 2019 to May 18th, 2019, the pay date of May the 24th. And this is total payroll of $64,138.32. And I would like to make a motion that we approve this payroll. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All righty. Under uh, gifts and donations, a Horizon Trust and Investment Management and Sweeney Charitable Trust, a zoo donation of $1,887.75. Uh, 
also from Nora Heeg, uh, slash Asteriatus, a zoo donation of $1,200. I would like to make a motion that we accept these donations. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Under minor transfers, a decrease uh, household supplies of $805.65, uh, an increase other supplies of the same amount, $805.65. Looks like we're just switching some uh, payments around. Uh, this is under minor transfers, and I would like to make a motion that we accept that transfer. Uh, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Under uh, Zoo Endowment, there is no report at this time. Under Board of Works, invoices totaling $154,070.52 were paid at the Board of Works meeting to JW Turf Incorporated. That was $14,093.99. Kenny Outdoor Solutions, Groundmaster Mower Maintenance, $64,937.93. Kenny Outdoor Solutions, Toro, 4500D Mower Golf Course. We had already okayed that at one time, $68,597.60. Kenny Outdoor Solutions for irrigation repair, repair for uh, uh, parts on the golf course, $4,997.96. Kenny Outdoor Solutions, irrigation repair, repair again for golf course, $960. Kenny Outdoor Solutions, uh, another irrigation repair, $483.04. Again, that is a total of $154,070.52. And I make a motion that we accept that. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Under credit card charges, credit card charges totaling $485.72 were paid to Corporate Payment Solutions. Uh, this was for Zoo Firewall Renewal. And I would uh, also move that this uh, be taken care of, that we pay this. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And that is all. Thank you, Mr. Lang. Do we have any comments from the audience tonight? Seeing none, any comments from the board? Oh. Yes, sir. Just please state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, yes, my name is uh, Fred Klenner from uh, 406 Belden Street. Welcome. Uh, been a uh, lifetime member of Michigan City. I'm a member of the Planning Commission and they're represented to the Zoning Board. And I only mention that to the extent that I shows my interest in Michigan City having been here and always being trying to be involved. So happy with the way Michigan City is growing in the last 10, 15 years, bringing coming back the way it has. And I want to thank the Park Department for their uh, participation in that and making uh, Michigan City uh, uh, a more enjoyable place to uh, be around. But we need to do something with the Michigan City Golf Course as far as the uh, drainage and the cart paths go. It's, uh, of course, it's atrocious this year, and it, ha it is all around uh, the country. I play golf regularly, been to a number of golf cart courses this uh, spring, and a number of them have problems, but Michigan City is by far uh, the worst. As I mentioned, we've uh, probably had more non-playing days than we've had playing days this year. Our, our fee structure is, is such that I don't know a lot of us complain about that, but it's still you get an annual pass to play golf there, and you're not able to do that. The city is going forward, uh, it, progressing and making those moves. Uh, Randy is uh, trying his heart out, out there to uh, make this a better golf course and with Chris. I think they do a very amicable job of uh, uh, doing as best that they can with their limited capabilities. But I think we need something major to happen here. There's been some other areas that have put some good money into their golf courses to try and make them uh, more enjoyable. 
Uh, Michigan cities has been pretty much stagnant through the years, except we do have a lot more weeds now than we used to have years ago. They did improve the, the weed situation. We got tons of weeds. If you ever need any weeds for your yard, they got them at the golf course. We quit mowing the weeds years ago. I understand that's an e economical situation as far as gas goes. Uh, but uh, getting back to the situation of the golf course, I think it's uh, incumbent on y'all to be uh, involved in that, to see what needs to be done, to get hold of Randy, uh, try and get his input into some uh, major changes there. And uh, anything you can do along those lines, I would appreciate. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Clender. Any comments from the board? Our, President Latchford, could I just announce that our July meeting dates are going to change? Mm -hmm. That would be great. So our July meeting dates will be held on July 10th and July 24th. And our next meeting will be Wednesday, June 19th at 5 p.m. So if there are no other questions or comments, we have a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Second.